Everyone, welcome to another Campus Conversation Shawnee Community College podcast. I am your host, Kevin Huntsberger, and this week we are joined by Craig Bradley, who is a longtime instructor here at Shawnee Community College, from computers to astronomy and everything in between. He's a ham radio operator. He is our karaoke DJ. You're a jack of all trades around here at Shawnee College, 30 plus years as well. You pretty much have to be when you work at a place, you know, I'm not a, we're not a large place, but you know, you have to have many hats. Yeah. And I don't think I officially said your name, Craig Bradley, of course, if people are watching, they immediately know who you are, a, a long time fixture, as I mentioned, 30, 32 years, is that 32 right? 32 years, this time. Yeah. I actually started in 84. Oh, okay. And taught electronics, and then I left and worked radio for a while. Okay, and you were a product of Shawnee Community College yes. as, as well, right? Yes, I took uh, took classes here. Um, some of the best times I've ever had were here. We played baseball. That's right, I do yeah. remember your, uh, your baseball picture from our throwback day. Yes. What was it about Shawnee College? You grew up in this area and... I'm from Metropolis. Okay. And a lot of my friends went to school here. And I started at SIU, but I wanted to take my um, my general studies courses here at the college. And it really worked out for me because, you know, it's closer, closer to home. I could stay at home. Uh, and I got a, a great education just, just being here and, you know, being here on campus. It's wonderful. It is, and and I love the fact that so many people, you know, when I say people, students specifically, relate to you. They know Mr. Bradley, Mr. Bradley, and, and your interaction and, and you being in the cafeteria or being in the Ed Center or being at, you know, these extracurricular events, baseball or PTK fundraisers, you are a big fixture and a big part of this college, and I think that that... Uh, it goes a very long way in resonating with our students. I think it, it really does leave an impact with them. It does. You know, I want them to feel comfortable talking to me because if not, then, you know, they wouldn't have anybody to bring problems to. Mm -hmm. I don't mind that. You know, mm -hmm. matter of fact, if, if they have problems, I prefer them to come to me with those problems and situations. Yeah. It, was there someone here when you were going to, to Shawnee that was kind of like that, that you decided to model that uh, approach? Uh, Mr. Dumas, um, he was pretty instrumental in that. He was always approachable. Uh, George Floyd, he was also very approachable. Um, they were, you know, some of my mentors here at the school. Actually, actually after I started as well. Mm -hmm. So, now how did you decide on? Because uh, you do astronomy here as well mm -hmm. as computers. Yes. Um, back in '94, there was an eclipse mm -hmm. uh, that happened. And I wasn't really teaching astronomy at that point, but uh, there was an eclipse that happened that day, May 10th, 1994. It was an annular eclipse, and it was pretty much pretty well eclipsed. Well, I brought my telescope mm -hmm. and set it up out here, and we looked at that, which really, you know, opened a lot of people's eyes because people had never, you know, looked through a telescope before. Uh, they hadn't ever uh, gotten to see an eclipse before, especially like that. You know, right. we've been fortunate. I've been fortunate to be able to see. Uh, two really nice eclipses. Of course, I've seen probably 20 or 30 since I've been here, partial eclipses. But that was a, a really you know awesome eclipse that day. Beautiful day. Not a, not a cloud in the oh, sky. Nice. Looking for that on April the 8th, too. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Fingers are crossed, for sure. Yeah, definitely. So talk to us a little bit, because we are going to get into the April 8th eclipse coming mm -hmm. up here. But, you know, you mentioned partial eclipse, and I think that some people maybe don't know the differences. They maybe don't get as excited about a partial eclipse. You know, this is... Uh, the big eclipse that's coming on April 8th, yep. kind of a repeat from 2017. This mm -hmm. area specifically was was part of that totality, and lots of people from around the region, you know, came here to get a better view, and I think that they're anticipating the same thing coming up on April 8th. Yeah. Talk to me, though, about the differences between a partial and a total solar eclipse that we're going to see coming up here soon. Well, a partial eclipse, you won't really notice it too much unless you actually have the glasses and put on. Okay. Um, the total eclipse, of course, you know, it gets dark. Uh, sometimes you can notice a little bit of darkening depending upon how much of the eclipse that, that, that there is. But really, the... The pinnacle is the total solar eclipse. Mm -hmm. That and the lunar eclipse. I love those. They're okay. beautiful. We actually had an eclipse the other night that was what they call a penumbral eclipse. That was only a partial this darkening of the, of the moon. It was not really that exciting. Mm -hmm. But when you have a total solar or total lunar eclipse, it's really something to see. It, you know, my first experience, or I think as a kid, probably there were a few that, that, that came and went. But we were talking before we started recording 
uh, Christmas Day 2000. Yes. I there was an my, eclipse, yeah. had my glasses from that day. Talk to us about that event. This was basically a partial eclipse that we was, that was visible here in this area. It was actually on Christmas Day. That's what it says here on the little glasses. And they're actually Christmas glasses that we had here at the school. I love it. Um, but we all, my students and I all got glasses, and we were actually planning to watch the eclipse that day. Um, the... It was a partial eclipse, happened at peak about 10, about 10 o'clock that Christmas morning. And uh, we had our glasses and everything. And these glasses right here, they were, they were okay then, but they're not the ones that you would want to use now. Okay. These, notice they had the black mm -hmm. on, the, on the front there. I mean, they, they still work, but um, you really would want to get some of the different newer glasses. I did bring a pair. These are ones that the school had last time. Mm -hmm. They are the ISO glasses. Yeah. So these are the ones that are safe for, for viewing. And notice you have the reflective coating on there that kind of reflects the light. So this is a lot better viewing. Um, I've heard people say that they, you need to replace the glasses if you, if you had something from before. If you had them and you let your kids play with them or you, they're scratched up, you know, you don't want to use those. But, you know, these are perfectly fine because yeah. they've been in my office you know, temperature control. Mm -hmm. Nobody's touched them. You know, yeah. since you know, since 2017, and these are all new ones that were never used. Talk to us about the importance of wearing glasses because I think people, you know, may think, oh, this is a, a, a great photo opportunity, or I'm going to look at this and and see. But really, there are dangers associated with looking. There are. At it. If you you can damage your eyes if you look at it over a minute mm. even with some of the glasses now somebody brought some glasses last time and i put those on and looked through them and they were just like i said throw these away because it was mm. just too much mm. but these cut down the light a lot more you can actually take that and put it over your camera lens or they do make camera i should have brought that i forgot to bring that today but they do have uh things you can put over your camera lens to be able to take pictures okay with your cell phone um but if you if you have the glasses, and a lot of people are talking about, well, I'm just going to use welding glasses. Mm. Eh, you don't want to do that. Yeah. I mean, your welding glasses, most people use those on a setting of like 10. They prefer, if you're going to use welding glasses to be able to see that, to be like 14 or 15 on the welding glass on the darkness. But these are a lot safer. So yeah. make sure and use some glasses like these. Uh, as long as they have that ISO rating. Yeah, I was going to say right look for here. that ISO <clears throat> number for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they, sh they should be safe. Uh, but still protect your eyes. Don't look any longer than like a minute. Matter of fact, just kind of glance up there and look. If you have young children, I have seen before where they've taken like a paper plate mm -hmm. and you cut out a little area here for this, uh -huh. for their noses, so they can just hold them up there. Okay. And you, and you really block out the rest of the glare. Yeah. So that really helps a lot too. What? And you may not know the answer to this, but are pets okay being outside during the eclipse? I mean, they, I mean they're probably not going to be looking or staring look at the sun. Right at the sun no, so, yeah. they're usually. I mean, they don't really notice anything. It's just getting dark. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that it would be a problem. But if you wanted to, if you wanted to put some, <laughs> some glasses on your dog, you know, you, you could. But I would do it with the with the the, the shield, like yeah. the paper plate shield. Okay, yeah. I remember, you know, August of 2017 when we had had the. Uh, first total solar eclipse here in Southern Illinois. Uh, it, it was summer, obviously. It was very warm that day. And no, no, it was hot. Okay, yes, it was, <laughs> it was hot that day. Uh, and then as totality started, you know, you noticed a, a very noticeable drop in temperature. I'm assuming we can kind of expect the same thing on April Oh, 8th. yeah, yes. Yeah, it, it, it's probably not gonna be as bad as, as it was then because it was, you know, in the 90s that yeah. day. The temperature dropped a few degrees. I actually have the, the paper that we used to be able to keep track of that uh, that day in my office still. Uh, it will get noticeably darker, noticeably cooler. Uh, look around and see what the animals are doing. Mm -hmm. you know, check on the check and see what the bugs are doing. You know, you may you may hear crickets start to come out. Mm. Uh, we saw bats flying. Uh, the the really? geese on the on the lake. Yeah. They actually walked out of the lake like it's evening time. It got really quiet and eerie still. Mm -hmm. So you really want to kind of observe that as well during the eclipse. Are there other changes or things that may happen? I know we're looking at about, what, four and a half minutes or so of totality? Totally four and a half minutes, about three and a half here on campus. Because okay. we're not quite in the middle, mm -hmm. which kind of intrigues me because we may be able to see a few other things with the eclipse, like Bailey's beads. 
uh, where the the craters on the moon actually allow a little bit of light to pop through every once in a while. You can kind of watch some of those things. Okay. Um, this eclipse is different from the last one because we're actually a little further uh, from the sun and the earth is a little closer to the moon. Okay. So if, if you'll, okay, I want you to hold this. Sure. You can be the earth. That's people on the earth. Okay. And I'll hold this. This is the sun okay. right here, and here's the moon right here. Okay, so let's line up for an eclipse. Well, last time we were further from the from the moon, so we only had like a 70 mile wide area and only like two minutes and 40 seconds. This time we're a little further from the sun and the moon's a little closer to us. Okay. So we have a 116 mile wide area here in this area and up to four and a half minutes. Oh, wow. So it does make a difference, the distance here that we are, whether the moon is at apogee or at perigee, uh, and then how far we are from the sun at that point to, to, the, to the length of the, of the eclipse. So that does kind of help to kind of show why it's a little bit different than before. So when we're looking, we're gonna, we're gonna see a little bit less of some of that area around the sun where you can see the red chromosphere before uh, because the moon is so much larger than last time. Mm. But down here where we are, we may be able to see some things on the bottom side of it that, we, that they won't be able to see like in Carbondale. Okay. Uh, because they're more in the center of that circle. So it's still going to look good mm -hmm. and you're still going to enjoy it. And I'm also looking forward to possibly, because the sun is so much more active now than it was in 2017. We're at the peak of a solar cycle, which um, that cycle has produced a lot, especially just like two days ago, uh, coronal mass ejections and solar flares. Oh, wow. Well, if that happens during the during the eclipse, you're going to see this, instead of this small area around, you can see this large area of just gases coming off of the sun, which that would be really cool. Yeah, very, very uh, intriguing for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as as people are watching here and you, you mentioned carbon, so depending on your, even your location in Southern Illinois or Southeast Missouri or Western Kentucky, you, you will have a different perspective or a different view of yes. this eclipse. Mm -hmm. And I think last time that, that uh, we had the eclipse, NASA had come and they actually had posted people at different sites to be able to measure the size of the moon, which we know that the size of the moon and also the size of the sun to see mm. if that's actually changed in the last few years. Okay. Uh, Cause you know, the sun does, it's, it's a ball of gas mm -hmm. and it may be a little bit larger, a little smaller at times, depending upon the activity. Interesting. So. Now what happens if we do experience, I know where I was in Carterville in, in 2017, we didn't have to worry about any cloud cover, but just down the road in Carbondale, they experienced it at, at SIU. They had reported that it got cloudy right before mm -hmm. totality started. It's it's weird, too. The same thing happened here. The clouds were mostly kind of swirling, mm -hmm. uh, but the ground was so hot and the air was starting to cool off, and those clouds do weird things. Mm. Uh, hopefully, since it's early spring, that day, that won't happen for us. I mean, my wife was at, at home in our pool, and she actually was, she saw the whole thing in Karnak. Okay. Well, here, we had a little cloud cover come over, and of course, when the cloud came over and it was starting to be totality, I almost cried. <laughs> <laughs> that would be frustrating, yeah. It, the, the interesting thing also is that people have, t you know, talked about this like a, a life, once in a lifetime experience, and we we're very fortunate here to, to get this twice in just, what, a seven year period. Yes. So. It doesn't happen very often, you know, at all. Mm -hmm. uh, there are eclipses that happen, you know, about two eclipses every year. We're in eclipse season right now. Okay. So we have we had an eclipse on Sunday night. That was a lunar eclipse. And then, of course, a solar eclipse happens. And then six months from now, when we're on the other side of the sun, because right now we're over here. Mm -hmm. And in six months, we'll be over here another season. So there will be a lunar eclipse in September and another solar eclipse in October. Oh, wow. And then next year in um, March, there will be a total lunar eclipse. Now with the solar eclipse, you have to be in the path of totality. A lunar eclipse, if you're just on the dark side of the, of, the, of the earth, you'll be able to see that. And we should have a good view of that March 14th and 15th next year. So that season happens every so often, every mm. six months or so, you'll have that season happen. That's what happened when we back back in, in, 80, in 94. In 93, in November, there was a lunar eclipse. It was beautiful. 
it was so dark that the moon was almost purple. Oh, wow. Uh, and then six months later was when we had that other eclipse that happened on May 10th. So that happens every so often. So if you watch the calendar, if you go to sites like Time and Date mm -hmm. uh, and look up their eclipses, they can show you all those different things. It's pretty. It's pretty. Pretty cool site. Very cool. We'll uh, we'll link that to the show notes. This you know, and this is my ignorance coming through when I ask this question. But you know, we were talking about this solar eclipse, you know, happening in 2024, seven years ago, mm -hmm. and probably even earlier than that. How far out are they projecting, or, or how are they able to know so precise that it's going to happen and this is going to be its path? Well, these eclipses repeat. Mm. So certain times of the year, uh, there's, a, there's a wobble in the, the, the moon's orbit. It's called the Saros cycle. So every 18 years, 11 days, and 8 hours... If you have an eclipse, that eclipse will repeat at that at that time. Okay. So when we so in eighteen years, the eclipse is going to happen again. But we're rotated eight hours to the east. I see. So they'll see it over in like Japan and China in that area. Okay. Okay. Um, and that's a pretty regular cycle. Like the eclipse that I saw in ninety four, uh, also repeated in May uh, May twentieth of two thousand twelve. Oh. But it was, again, eight hours. Yeah. Late. So I saw it start, but I couldn't see the whole thing because it was actually, you know, too far to the west. Gotcha. But that, but they, they have dates on that out to, you know, the next one here is going to be 2044 that we're going to be able to see in the United States. Okay. So. Another 20 years. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. And so talk to me also because you, you had the models here with the sun and the moon and, mm -hmm. the, and earth. Um, I know this is a big part of your curriculum with your astronomy students. Yes. I've, I've seen the moon phase game. Is that something that you developed on your own? I did that. I, I took a class at SIU to finish my master's degree uh, in gaming and simulation. Mm -hmm. We had to come up with a game. This is two, a two-week class. Oh, wow. So we started on that that Monday, had class, talked about games and stuff. On Thursday, we got the assignment to build a game that we could use in class. Wow. So I went to Hobby Lobby mm -hmm. in Carbondale, bought all the pieces. I thought, you know, it'd be a, kind of cool to, because people don't understand moon phases. Right. So I thought it'd be pretty cool to be able to make a game like this. So when I came back to school on Monday, I had it all finished, all 105 cards and the whole board and all this stuff. And we still use it in my class today. Wow. It's yeah. it's seen some uh, uh, cycles of students, it has. to say the very least. Yep. Yeah. And this guy here, he's uh, he's 24 years old now. Wow. Yeah. I, I just, I, you know, because I see then how the students, because it is things that a lot of us probably wouldn't have remembered from high school if, if we even got that uh, knowledge in high school and then seeing them play the game and, and how they light up, pardon the pun, when, when they get something right or, oh, you yeah. know, when they're moving around on the, on the board and stuff. So that's got to be a rewarding part of the job as well. It's very competitive and I like the, like that fact because I break them up into teams of people they don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, six teams, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, I'll, I'll, I'll pick them like that and I tell them, okay, Introduce yourselves on your team. Well, before that, my class is pretty quiet. Mm -hmm. After we play the game, now they're talking, they're interacting. So that was one big piece of that, that I wanted to also bring with this. But also just to have them observe the sky and to look at the moon phases and look at the moon. The moon's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to see where it is certain times of the year, they have to actually... Uh, track that once a week. They have to. I've got a sheet they have to fill out. You know, with the moon phase and the time they see it and the location and all this, and it really helps them to kind of understand the motion and the cycles that the moon makes in the sky and the sun. Um, we 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 take it for granted sometimes because it's you know it's always there, but once you understand how it works, how the phases work. Uh, then it it helps you understand things like the the eclipse, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, the, both the solar and the lunar eclipses. Yeah, it it comes uh, you know back to the whole you know, full circle and, mm -hmm. and learning uh, beyond the classroom. And I know you do labs mm -hmm. uh, in the evenings because obviously, if you're looking at the moon, you can't do that in the middle of a school day. So you you have to. Mm, we can, but it's not as, <laughs> it's not as easy, fun. I guess, or as fun. Yeah, I like the outdoor labs at night. Um, Basically, because you know, a lot of times during the students, 
day, they, it's pretty stressful. Mm -hmm. You got classes, you got homework, you got all the stuff you got to do, you got to be here. I tell them, you know, when you come out here, this is where you relax. This is where you come out and just enjoy the sky. Mm -hmm. And part of their assignment is to go out later on and try to find the North Star and see where that is in relation to their house. Um, I want them to be able to go outside and enjoy the sky mm -hmm. because it is, it's free. Meteor yeah. showers are awesome. Uh, eclipses are awesome. But the best thing is for me, and I tell the students, I said, most of you are not going to be astronomers. But I want you to learn this because one day you're going to have children. Yeah. They're going to have questions. Yeah. And I want you to be the smartest person in the whole entire world because you're able to tell them different things. Yeah, I, I love that. And, you know, the area that we're in here with, with Shawnee Community College specifically, you know, we've talked before, we're kind of in the middle of nowhere. And for events like that, that is an advantage because there aren't a bunch of lights lighting the sky up and, and taking away from that beauty. It does get dark and you're able to see. It's really dark. And when you go outside and you can and actually spot the Andromeda galaxy, the double cluster in Perseus, when you can see those things, uh, it does make it a, a lot different. When you see the Milky Way for the first time, mm -hmm. you know, when you see those things in there, uh, just naked eye, it's really neat to show them all those things. And they can still find them, they can still spot those things. Yeah. And if you're ever having trouble, you know, and you want to look looking for something, you can't find it, and you're in my class, you have my phone number call me it's still the same number <laughs> yeah. and I, I have a feeling you'll be saying that for for years to come but uh it, it is so interesting and in the whole concept of of space exploration and what else is out there and and you know uh, i think the eclipse will help to maybe pique some interest in people that maybe weren't thinking about it before maybe weren't as curious about it before but mm -hmm. you know i know that you work with students of, of all ages little kids have been here before oh, yeah. for kids camps and mm -hmm. and you pull the telescopes out and 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 help them experience that as well so there's really no age limit to the learning as far as no. our solar system goes no i mean if you're old enough to to look at the sky you're old enough to be you know an amateur astronomer it's, i'm just an amateur mm -hmm. you know and just go out there and I like to look at things, try to take a few pictures, but mostly, you know, taking the classes out and the students and talking about different things, telling stories that, you know, I, I had when I was, you know, younger, mm -hmm. looking, seeing things in the sky, you know, and, and uh, just, just to share. The, yeah. best thing, the best thing is to share the sky with somebody. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, who it is or, or, or where. Uh, you can always, you know, see the sky. I was actually recently in, in Iceland went up there for actually it was our 30th anniversary mm -hmm. we took a trip up there and i was hoping to see the the north the northern lights yeah. you know the moon was too bright couldn't see it that night but i did get to share a little bit with with the the people that were on our trip oh that's know, cool so that was kind of neat yeah you know? so i should take that off my taxes shouldn't I? <laughs> exactly like a work trip yeah. yeah exactly well on april 8th it is a monday it's coming up very soon uh it will be the total solar eclipse in shawnee community college is inviting the public to come out we will have some uh glasses on hand for folks that maybe need a pair of glasses uh, what else can people expect as they come here on I'll April have, 8th? I'll have telescopes set up out there. My students, they're going to be, they're going to have jobs. They're going to have to, you know, to, to look at the, the, the shadows and talk about that and to take temperatures. And uh, every once in a while, we'll stop and you know, just listen to nature. Mm, that'll be you good. Know, so so you get the get the full experience. It'll be fun. Wait. I cannot wait. Anything else, Mr. Bradley, you want to add before we wrap up this week's episode? Uh, wear your glasses. Wear your glasses. Wear your glasses. Yes, make sure they have that iOS number in them as well. And you can reach out to us here on the Shawnee Community College social media or on our website. Uh, it is Shawnee our shawneecc.edu slash podcast. And you can ask questions or uh suggest ideas for future episodes. Thank you so much for listening and or watching to this week's Campus Conversations. We will talk again soon. Live long and prosper.